Today's the scripture readings invites us to reflect on the role of children in the plan of God for humanity. The trouble is, in the past, more than today, children have been seen in terms of having a utilitarian function. In those days, people have children so that the children, when they grow up, will look after them when they are old. They can also continue the family name, the lineage of the family, which is very important to many cultures. And most of all, they can contribute to the labor, especially in those days when many parents were farmers or even in doing business. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, children are no longer considered a financial investment for the family. In fact, today, even grown-up children, even when they are married, some of them are still dependent on the financial help of their parents. And today, our parents are well-educated. They have enough savings. They do not rely on their children to look after them. They are very comfortable, even without their children. And so, from this perspective, children are redundant. But this is where we fail to understand that children, they are gifts from God. It is not our property. It is not something to be used for ourselves. Children, they are gifts from God to help us to share in His love and to help us to grow in capacity to love like God. Because the greater love we have in our hearts, the bigger the heart is, the greater the joy and happiness. This explains why when couples do not want to have children, when they could, their love is just between the husband and wife. My dear brothers and sisters, that love will be stifled. Because when the love is just between two persons and doesn't go beyond the two persons, that love will be stale. And not only that, they become possessive and insecure. And if one day the partner dies, their life has no more meaning, no more purpose. But I think in many cases, because they have no children, they get tired of each other. And sometimes, very often, they become so possessive that there is no love in the relationship anymore. Love must be free, must come from the heart. And that's why a child is given to a married couple so that they can grow in love because the child is the fruit of the love between the husband and the wife. And the child, therefore, is the common love, the personification, so to speak, of the love of their parents. And that is why both parents will direct their love to the child. And that's why very often I always tell married couples, the greatest gift you can give to your children is not to love your children first, is to love each other. Because if you love each other deeply, your child who looks at you will know that he is secure in love. And your love for each other will overflow to the child. But when husband and wife do not love each other, we cannot love the child adequately, no matter how much we try to give. It is still inadequate. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, the gift of a child is to help us to grow in love, to go beyond ourselves. But the child does not only belong to us. The child also belongs to God. And this is where many of us fail to recognize this. Children, they are gift from God. Our task as parents is to help our children to recover their identity so that they know that they are not just our children, primarily they are children of God. Their life is not just on this earth. We need to give a definite Great future for our children. 
not just to live for this life, but to live for eternal life, to be one with God. And therefore, as parents, we are actually, just like Joseph, looking after God's children. It's for this reason we have no right to abort our babies because the baby does not belong to you. It is not your baby. Ultimately, it's God's child. And only God is the one who is the author of life. The great task, therefore, of parents is to help their children to know their true identity in life so that they can live their life purposefully with meaning with purpose, we've hoped. But this child, my dear brothers and sisters, does not even belong to God only. The child also belongs to the community. When God gives a child, it is not just for the parents. The child, ultimately, that God gives to us is for the greater good of the community. When Jesus grew up at the age of 30, he had to leave home. Mary did not stop him because by then, Mary was already a widow. She could have told Jesus, look, who is going to look after me? It's just like many of our parents today, when their children want to join religious life, priestly life, they try to blackmail them emotionally. If you join, then who will look after me? We need you. But truly, my dear brothers and sisters, what is our task as parents? It is to help our children to find their vocation in life. Not my vocation. We do not impose our vocation on our children. But we must help them to discover what is God's plan for them. Unless they fulfill the plan of God, they can never be happy in life. We must not think that unless my child is a doctor, a lawyer, accountant, a professional, then the child will be happy and successful. That is not true. Your children can be very successful in the eyes of the world, can earn lots of money, but their life will be miserable because that is not their vocation. And they're living for themselves. Every vocation is a vocation to love. It's a vocation to service. It's a vocation to community. It's never for ourselves only. But you see, the mentality of our parents is, oh, bring my child up, you'll be successful, you've got plenty of money, and then we can go traveling here and there. It's all about me. About myself. About my house. My car. It's not about Do we find fulfillment in serving people? This is where real fulfillment comes. Just by looking at ourselves, enjoying ourselves, life has no meaning. That is why, my dear brothers and sisters, this is what we are invited to do as parents today, to help our children to find their true vocation in life, and they will be happy. Otherwise, my dear brothers and sisters, even if they are successful, they are not going to look after you. You have no filial piety. The greatest gift you can give to your child, my dear parents, is the gift of faith, the gift of Jesus. If they love Jesus, you can be very sure, wherever they are, whichever vocation they join, they will be faithful to you. They will love you even much more. But if you don't give them Jesus, they love the world, and you will be out of place.